Hello, are you ready to get your craft on? Today we are making handmade paper and it is gonna to be totally fun, easy, and so gorgeous. My name is Brittany Bly, I'm the founder of Pop Shop America. Before you get started, I'm gonna make myself a cup of tea, courtesy of Tea Runners. The one that I'm drinking today is one of my favorites. It's orange creme brulee rooibos. It's gonna, let's see how long, I'm gonna steep it for five minutes. It's been about five minutes, so this is nice and steeped. I'm gonna go ahead and pour myself a cup of it. And let's just get this out of the way so we can get our craft on. I do have tissue paper here, which we'll use later. It's really great for making colored paper, but it's not something we need to have. What we do need is a paper making mold. I have this beautiful mold that opens up halfway. And so we're gonna be using the screen portion a lot, but this actually acts as a helpful guide. We're gonna need a container that's larger than our paper mold to hold water and the paper pulp. So it doesn't matter what kind of container it is, just as long as it's a little bit bigger than the paper mold itself. We're gonna need a sponge. Here's our paper pulp right here. I made this paper pulp myself all I did was just shred some copy paper, submerged it in water. It doesn't matter how much water you use, you just need for your paper to completely soak. Then you let it sit for about an hour. Some people prefer overnight, and then you just blend it until it makes this pasty, fun pulp. It's super easy. But in a lot of cases, you'll use pre-made pulp. Pre-made pulp is a little bit confusing because it has these wacky names, like linter's rag or cotton rag, any of those are completely fine for this project. All it's telling you with that name is what that paper pulp is made out of, but any of them are just fine. So we have our water right here. We're also gonna need a drying surface. So any kind of cotton tea towel or napkin or even just a regular bath towel is fine for this. And then last, this is all about making it cute, and this is all about having some fun with your paper. We wanna consider some fun add-ons, like dried flowers, which we add right into the paper itself, just to make some really beautiful dried flower paper. You can also add some chunky glitter like this. Confetti that I have right here, which is a really similar paper to that tissue paper, and it works really well or you could use something like this, which is more of like a plastic or a metallic um, kind of confetti as well. So lots of different supplies that you can include, and this isn't the limit. You could also include seeds, you could include um, shredded like paper sacks, or even like the roll inside of like a toilet paper roll, something heavier and something brown just to add a little bit of texture, thickness. There's lots of different possibilities beyond that but that's enough to get us started. So let's go ahead and start making this paper. Okay, so the first step is I'm gonna pour this water into my container right here, then I'm gonna pour the paper pulp in next. Now one thing that we wanna do when we pour our paper pulp into the water is we want to evenly blend it through the water. And the reason that we wanna do that is we wanna make sure that, the, that we're not concentrating the paper pulp in one area. We want our paper to be really professional and we want the thickness to be the same from edge to edge. So what we do is we just blend this paper pulp throughout the water and we do that same thing. As we add the paper pulp into our mold, we wanna make sure that it's edge to edge so that we have a very professional thickness, even thickness, professional looking paper. So that's our next step is we just go ahead and start to dunk our mold. So let's take a look at this mold just one more time. So see how it opens up? So this side right here is going to be facing up and this is gonna help us guide into the perimeter of the mold. And then as I mentioned, we wanna make sure that the paper pulp goes from edge to edge. So we wanna make sure that it doesn't get thicker right in here we want it to be thicker along the edges. So right now, I just have paper pulp. There's nothing else added, so we're just making a plain paper. We're not even adding flowers or glitter or anything yet. 
So what I do is I want to dip my mold into the water bath and I want to make sure that I get the pulp from edge to edge. Now your container doesn't have to be super deep. You might notice that mine is a little bit shallow and that's totally fine because I can use my hands and the way that I'm tilting the mold to get the paper from edge to edge. Then we can just smooth off any of that paper pulp that's along the mold itself. And once we have a good amount of paper pulp in our mold, so once we have our paper pulp from edge to edge and we have enough paper pulp in our mold, we're just gonna set it to the side and let it dry for a minute. While I'm waiting for my first paper to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and get started with some second paper. So I have a second mold right here that I'm just gonna to set to the side. Now I wanna go ahead and make some paper that's a little bit different. The first one I wanna do is a flower paper. So I'm gonna grab a couple of different kinds of flowers and I'm actually gonna drop them right into our water bath right here. So here I've got some corn flowers. I'm also gonna use some marigold. The colors look beautiful together. But the thing that's really important when we use dried flowers in our paper is we want flowers that can be very flat inside of the paper. Pressed flowers are great. You can even crush up any of your flowers to make them smaller so that they're more flat kind of pieces that you have. But what you don't want, for example, are fresh flowers where they have these three-dimensional sculptural shapes the problem that's gonna happen is that the flowers are actually gonna be inside of all of those paper fibers. So if you have something that's dimensional, those fibers are not gonna to hold together. There's gonna to be a lot of space in there. You're gonna end up with paper that's uneven. It's gonna have like holes that are kind of full of air. It's just, it's not gonna work quite right. It's even gonna tear easily. It's just not gonna to bind together the way that you need it. So we want flowers that will fit inside of those paper fibers. So this is definitely a lot. You certainly don't need to add this much when you're uh, making a flower paper. And I'm just moving them around so that I have a nice evenly blended color effect. And then just dry my hands to the side. Again, when I'm using this mold, I wanna go ahead and open it up and make sure that I'm using the correct side. So I'm gonna use, this is gonna be our up, and what this is gonna do is it's gonna be our guide to help fill the frame. And then later, we'll open it back up to press the paper out to let it, to dry, let it dry better. So again, we just scoop it right in there, and you see those flowers come up as a part of the paper. So I'm just scooping a lot of that paper pulp and I want it to be nice and even. I want it to go edge to edge. I wanna make sure that I don't end up with paper that's thicker in the middle and then thinner on the sides. So I just wanna make sure that it is nice and even. Now one thing we don't need to worry about is if we end up with more flowers in one area and less in another, that's actually gonna make it look really cute, really cool. So don't worry if you see like a concentration in one area, it's really gonna work out when it's dry. Now again, I'm just gonna set this to the side and let it dry for a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and move my water bath off to the side and lay out a dry cloth for the next couple of steps in the process of making this paper. So anything that's in your way, just go ahead and move it and take some cloths. They can be cotton towels, they can be dish towels, whatever works, and just make yourself a nice little palette. You will want this um, cotton cloth to be larger than the paper itself, so something nice and big like this is perfect. So we just lay it down like this, make sure it is nice and flat, and then we'll move on to our next steps. So I have both of my paper molds right here, and I'm just gonna set them down and work one at a time. So we just wanna take our sponge and start to press it underneath the paper so I'm not actually touching the paper pulp. I'm only touching the sponge to the screen itself. 
and I just want to dry it as much as I can before I flip it over. So I want to get out as much excess water as I can before I open up this paper mold. So we just keep pressing. Yeah, and that definitely pulled some water out of there. And we'll just do the same thing with our plain paper. And once you have your sponge pressed up against the wet paper in here, you can actually see if certain areas are thinner or thicker. So this can also be a really good moment just to make sure you like what you've made, make sure that it's gonna look nice and even. So even in this one, this plain one, the first one that I did, I do see a little spot that looks a little bit thinner, but I'm not too worried about it. I think that's fine. Once we have our excess water pulled out as best as possible, we'll just take our sponge to the side we're gonna open up our paper mold. Now we're gonna flip this over, nice and gently, so see how I'm actually going sideways? Just leave it in that position, and then do the same thing again with your sponge, but now you're using the cloths on the other side to also help absorb that excess moisture. Just keep dabbing the sponge to the back of the screen and as you continue to absorb the water, as you continue to absorb the water, you'll be able to pick the mold off and your paper will be left on the dish towels or on your cotton towels that you have below. And then you can just set that to the side. So let's do that again with our flower paper. Let's open it back up. Flip it over, press it into those cotton towels, use our sponge to press out any excess moisture that'll absorb into the sponge. If your sponge starts to get too moist at this point, just go ahead and squeeze it out over the sink, come back, and just keep pressing until you have a lot of that excess moisture removed. So sometimes there's really no way to tell, right? How much moisture is still there? You know, th there can be a lot of variation. So like, when do you know if it's time to pull the mold up? Now, every now and again, as you pull the mold up, you see that the paper is still stuck to the mold itself. That's totally okay. All you need to do is just use your hand and just peel up the corner and then try again. And now we have our paper on the dish towel, so we have our two pieces right here. And now we just leave both of them here to dry. It's been about eight hours and all of our handmade paper is now dry. Of course, your dry times might vary a little bit just based on some environmental conditions. But let's go ahead and take a look and see how these turned out. This is one of my favorites. This is the dried flower paper. I love the way that the flowers are kind of concentrated along the edge. It's a little bit abstract. Now, if you remember when we were making this, I'd mentioned that it's fun to kind of consider the composition, consider where everything is gonna land before it's finished. And I think that that's what makes this sparkle and looks so cute. This one might be my favorite. It's simple, but I love that you can see the tooth. You can see the texture of the paper itself. It feels really handmade and that's what's so gorgeous about it. This one we made off screen, and it has some paper confetti in addition to flowers. Of course, you can use glitter, you can use confetti like this, or ones that are more plastic, or even metal foil. There's so many different possibilities of how you can style your paper to your tastes and make something that's really special. So here we are with our finished handmade paper. If you like this tutorial, Make sure you like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. This is Pop Shop America, and happy crafting!